Hello, Maris. Good evening. Good evening, Carlos. Good evening, Maris. How are you guys? How do you feel today? Very how, good. Okay, and how was your day? Good? So-so? Busy? Very busy, but excellent. Okay, that's Teacher, it. I have been sorry because my internet has been bad, very bad. Oh, really? Yes. Oh my God. Okay. Well, let's actually um, hope you don't have any issues with the class, right? But it's okay. I mean, if you want, you can turn off your camera, right? Because that, that will actually enhance the internet connection, okay? Okay, guys. Well, welcome. This is going to be our class number seven. Mm -hmm. And today we have different things that we are going to cover. Right, so we are going to start with today's agenda. Uh, we have the warm up, then we are going to move to grammar, and today we are going to start with a new topic, which is complex subject agreement. We are going to study the book, then we are going to move to product testing. We have listening quizzes, we also have grammar quizzes, and we also have the speaking time for you to practice. Yeah, and we have the wrap up, which is the end of the class. So we are going to start, and the warm up for today is going to be a tongue twister. Yeah. So this tongue twister, guys, goes like this. I wish to wish the wish you wish to wish. But if you wish the wish the witch wishes, I won't wish the wish you wish to wish. Yeah. This one is for you to practice the letter S H. Yes. All right. So, yes, guys. Okay. So, I wish to wish the wish you wish to wish. But if you wish the wish the witch wishes, I won't wish the wish you wish to wish. Okay. Very good. So, S H. This one, which wishes yeah okay i need volunteers who wants to try first me teacher okay thank you carlos go i wish to wish the wish you wish to wish but if you wish the wish the wish wishes i want wishes the wish you wish to wish Okay, so so okay, but we can improve. Yes, okay, okay, Raul, got it. Abigail, thank you, Carlos. Uh, practice, practice, Carlos. Okay, Abigail, I wish to wish the wish you wish to wish, but if you wish the wish the which wishes, I won't wish the wish you wish to wish. Okay, very good, okay? Just the fluency, but the pronunciation was okay, right? Just practice fluency, yeah? Next. I wish to wish the wish, you wish to wish. But if you wish the wish, the wish wishes, I won't wish the wish, you wish to wish. My God, Luis Miguel, you didn't connect yesterday. Okay. Yes, yeah, sorry, teacher. Okay, don't worry, it's okay. All right, so next. Uh -huh. Me, teacher. <laughs> go, okay, again? All right, okay. go, go, go. I wish to wish the wish you wish to yes. wish, but if you wish the wish, the wish wishes, I want wish the wish you wish to wish. To wish, much better. Yes, very good. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Juan Antonio. Go, Tony. <laughs> okay. I wish to wish the wish you wish to wish. But if you wish the wish the witch wishes, I won't wish the wish you wish to wish. Very good. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Very good. Yes. Well done. Okay. Somebody else? Uh, me, teacher. Good evening. Good evening, Jonathan. Go. Okay. I wish to wish the wish, wish, wish. But if you wish the wish, the wish, wishes, I won't wish the wish you wish to wish. 
Okay, yes, that was perfect. Thank you, Jonathan, very good. Emerson, can you please go? Yes, please, good evening. Good evening. I wish to wish the wish, you wish to wish, but if you wish the wish, the wish, wishes, I won't wish the wish, you wish to wish. Okay, very good. Use this one, which, right? Which. Which. Yes, which. Very good. Okay, well done. Which. Okay, somebody else I want to participate? Let me see. Uh, Maurice, can you please go ahead and say it? Okay. I wish to wish the wish you wish to wish, but is you wish the wish the wish wishes. I won't wish the wish you wish to wish. Very good. Okay. Well done, Maurice. All right, guys. Okay, this okay. is a tongue twister, okay, for you to practice when you are at home as well, okay, or in your way uh, to work, right? So I wish to wish the wish you wish to wish. But if you wish the wish the witch, okay, the witch wishes, I won't wish the wish you wish to wish, okay? Very good. Now let's move. Let's move and let's talk about the things that we were covering yesterday. Do you remember about the adjectives that we covered? Yeah? Okay, very good. So we have, which is very modern, ahead of its time, put in age, high tech, a state of the art, and we also have the ones that are old fashioned. So behind the times, low tech, obsolete, and outdated. What is the meaning of outdated? What did I say? Desactualizado. Okay. Outdated, right? Pasado de moda. Yeah. Very good. So, right now, what we need to do is the following. Yeah. Let's describe the products below using the adjectives in the previous slide. If a product has existed for some time, let's try to compare the time when it was launched and now. For example, yeah, we have the latest iPhone, the CD player, Windows 95, Color TV, the iPad, laptop computers, the MP3 player. Those are the products that we have, yeah? The example is Windows 95 was considered to be a state of the art when it was released, but now it is outdated. Yeah, what can you tell me about the MP3 player? Try to describe it with those adjectives. Absolutely. Okay, so? The, the huh? CD player is up, obsolete. Okay, the CD player is obsolete. Very good. Another um, item or product, guys? Uh huh? Yes, describe it with the adjectives that we covered yesterday. Uh -huh. The the laptop computer is yes. not obsolete, but is is better. Okay. Um, uh, uh -huh. More up. Okay. Okay. It, it has more uh, apps. You said, I think. Okay. Yes, could be. What can you tell me, guys, about, let me see, the iPad. What can you tell me about the iPad? The iPad is good in age. The really? iPad is good in age. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And what can you tell me, guys, about the color TV? Oh, my gosh. What can you tell me? Behind the times. <laughs> exactly. It is behind the times, right? Yes. Excellent. It is outdated. Yeah. It has low tech, right? Very good. Very good, guys. So let's move. All right. Let's move and let's continue with this. 
what do you think has been the most important new invention in the last 50 years? In your opinion? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Okay, think about it then. I'm going to ask one of you. Okay, think about it. What do you think has been the most important new inventions in the last 50 years? I think no. this uh, computer. The computer. I think a bit deep computer. Okay, all right. Very good. Somebody else? About the components of the computer, the microchips, is the, is the most important to develop the, the computer, the software, the, and other type of technologies okay. that um, between the computer and the manufacturers, you can produce different um, in, invents uh, or, or products like that, uh, mm -hmm. like the iPhone, iPod, uh, smartphones, cellular phones, uh, Inclusive cellular phones that is the the start on the beginning like Motorola started it, it it will it will be it once be possible uh, when you invent the microchip. Okay. All right. Okay. It wouldn't be possible. Okay. All right. Mm, yes. Somebody else. The most important new invention. I think the, the internet because uh, it gets uh, connected and inform, 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 yeah. inform yeah. in a real time and we can make uh, transactions yeah. immediately. Transactions? Transactions in, in, in media, immediately. 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 Yes. In real time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. I think, uh -huh. uh, in my opinion, I think we can't uh, communicate about by holograms. Oh, really? I think. Okay. Could be right. That would be the next probably biggest technological innovation. I think. Or what do you think will be the next biggest technological innovation? Well, let's see. I think I think the most innovation invention will be implanting all of them. Yeah, what Jonathan mentioned, right? Yeah. Could be. The use of artificial artificial intelligence In the use of artificial intelligence guys have you seen this um this i don't know if i told you about this but this series which is um black mirror no no teacher black mirror no. is a good series uh is a uh, in Netflix series. Yes, and it is future. really, really nice. I mean, it talks about everything that we are living right now and also about artificial intelligence, right? You will be really surprised on the things that you will see on that series. I mean, but it's true what we are living right now. It is a good series. I really recommend that one. Okay, Black okay, Mirror. Perfect. Yes, uh -huh. artificial intelligence at some point, maybe we are going to be able to, I don't know, to be alive, but in a software. Did you already see in the, the new about the Elon Musk? No, I haven't seen it. I, I saw um, a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And it is a video where he is dancing with a robot, a women robot. Imagine. Okay. Yes, I think that we are going to have a lot of things in the future. Yes. Okay. Do you think that there will be more or less new innovations in the future? Well, 
there will be more, right? More and more, maybe. I agree with you. Yes, uh, the technology is more than advantage uh, every day. And uh, mm -hmm. I think that uh, possible tools like the chat GPT make possible mm -hmm. another type of explanations of the technology right now. Yes, that is true. <laughs> and how difficult is it to develop innovative products or services? Do you think that it is difficult? Well, yes, right. It is difficult, I think. And we need to have the um, product testing, right? All of those things that actually we are going to cover today, right? So can you please help us reading what is product testing, uh, Carlos Omar? Okay, product testing. How is it called consumers testing or comparative testing? is a process of measures, measuring the properties or performance of products. Product testing is any process by means of which um, research measures of product performance, safety, quality, and compli compliance with the established standard. Okay, compliance. Compliance. Established. Established. T. Yes, guys. Well, the product testing is actually, uh, you know, this one is also called consumer testing or comparative testing. I mean, it, this one is a process of measuring the properties or performance of products. Yeah, I mean, the product testing helps to measure the performance of a product, right? That is the product testing. Then this is going to be the topic that we are going to cover through this unit number two product testing. Let's start first with vocabulary. So I'm going to need uh, your help. What we are going to do is the following. So we have this vocabulary. So we have from one to seven, yes? So I'm going to say number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And what you need to do is that you are going to read the, the word and then you are going to look for the definition. For example, site and handling test is this one and you are going to read the definition at the same time, okay? So number one, please, Atilio. Number two, eh, please, Roberto Esaú. Number three, eh, well, Raul is on his way. Pablo, number three. Nelly, number four. Luis Miguel, number five. Jose, number six. And Emerson, number seven, okay? Go, number one. Site and handling test. What is it? This test is a good option when there are sin, significant, no, significant, 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 tactile or visual elements of the product for consumer to experience. 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 Excellent. Number two. Use test. Consumers take the product to be used either as a sample or for an extended period as they will as they will usually use it in their own home. Yes. Thank you. Number three. Branded test. Branded test. Consumer is aware of the brand they are trading. Mm -hmm. This test better reflect the real world experience and the value and of the brand. Of the brand, okay, trying, okay, very good. Blind test, Hi. thank you. Blind test, bird are tested and brand, branded, mm -hmm. so the consumer focus strictly on the product's characteristic and not on the brand name. Perfect. Very good. A monadic method, number five. Yes? Number five? No? 
Um, okay, so, well, yes, Luis Miguel. No, Abigail, number five. You. Uh, okay, Luis. Number four. No, number five. Number five. Customer use product sing, singing in hand, hand they write that they use things, handle another product and write the customer does does not write bad products against each other. Sorry, teacher, yo estaba escuchando medio cortado, no sé si eso es lo que me pidió. Oh, okay. No, no, Luis Miguel, but thank you. Okay, thank you. Abigail, can you please uh, read number five, monadic method? Customer use the products in real circumstances. Mm -hmm. They use a product signed, signed, handle it and write and later. Write it later. Uh, consumers, guys. Okay, consumers. Okay, no customers. Well, it's a synonym, but the word is consumers. Okay. Uh, number six. Sequential monadic method. Sequential monadic monadic method. Um, consumer use a product, cite it, and handle it. They rate it, then they use cite, handle another product, and rate it. The consumer does not rate both products against each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do it in a separate way, but they test two products. Okay, number okay. seven. I yeah. have a, a question. Yeah. Uh, in the past, I said co cons consumer. I guess I, I, I am the consumers. Con consum consumers. Con consumers. 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 Customers. Uh huh. Or customer. This is the same. Um. Yes. I mean, the customer is the one that actually goes to the store, right, to buy products. And the consumer is the one that um, is almost the same, but in a different type of context, right? I mean, we we are both, right? But okay. it depends, yeah, it depends on the context. Consumer, Very good. Like the pronunciation. Ah, uh, yes. Consumer. Consumers. Okay. Yes. Very good. Number seven, theory comparisons test. Theory comparison test. Consumers use or see and handle one product, then another are asked to indicate which which of the two they prefer. They prefer, okay. This one is going to be sight, okay? Sight. 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 And this sight. one is asked with T. Asked. Yeah, ED, right? Okay, guys. Those are the type of product testing that we can have. As you may see, we have seven, right? From the ones that we have read, which one do you consider is the best one for you? You know, what I think, right? In my case, I think that the blind test, because sometimes once you hear a brand, I mean, you actually start um, maybe to, I don't know, have different opinions, right? So the blind test, I think that you focus on is strictly, look at this, on the products, right? Not the brand. Because sometimes when you hear a brand, you start like thinking about different things, right? That's what I think, but I don't know you. Tony? Tony? Customer, I prefer the monadic method. Okay. Because Why? I like to to sense, to touch, to feel, to view the product. Okay. And when you testing in the real time, real life, the the use of them, you know is the product um accomplishment your necessities. Okay. Okay, to fulfill, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh -huh. Okay. Somebody else that may prefer a different one. Uh -huh.
No? Okay. Then let me ask, okay? Nelly, which one do you prefer? I think the blind test too, because um, we don't uh, suggest for uh, experience before than we have. That you had, okay, in the past, okay. Yes. Very good. Abigail, what about you? No, it's not here, Abigail. No, okay. Then, Aleida. Um, for me, maybe you test. Okay. Okay. They because use... you you can you can take a sample. Mm -hmm. and it works. You can, and you can ex um how do you say like experiment the so you can so you experiment. can feel the experience. Uh -huh. You can feel the experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, I think that, that one, yeah, it works as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Aleida. Roberto Esau. Um, I think that uh, in some cases, uh, the, the number seven, very comparison test, is a good option mm -hmm. because in some cases it allows customers uh, uh, compare, comparison. Compare? Between two, compare it between two or more uh, products. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, I think that that one as well, right? Uh -huh. Okay, very good. Let's continue. Okay, let's continue. So now let's move to this short uh, role play that we have. Yeah, I need two volunteers. One is going to be Mr. Veles and the other one, Miss Ayala. Me. Abigail, so you are Mr. Veles and Miss Ayala? Me, teacher. Me, teacher. Okay, in this case, uh, Carlos Omar, okay? Okay. Go, Abigail. Good morning. I'm thrilled to announce we have green light to work on our last Leicester product texting. Thanks. Okay. One of the good things I lie about working with you all is the mm -hmm. effort you make to do the job well. Okay. I agree with you, Mr. Ayala. The efforts, this task mm -hmm. um, require re, re are important to take into account. Okay. Definitely. I have already written, written some ideas for a monolith test so we can discuss them, take a look. Mm -hmm. Good job, but have you figured out the cost? Some difficult de decisions to make refer to Fancy material and cost versus quality. <laughs> yes, boss. One of the most important factors in this job is managing costs. And I'll, I am and I'm good, good at that. I'm good at that. Okay, very good, guys. Thank you. So right now, what we are going to focus on is on pronunciation. Yeah. So the first thing that we are going to mention is this. So this, this word, okay, which is thrilled, thrilled. Yeah, I'm thrilled 
to announce. What is the meaning of I'm thrilled to announce? It's like saying, I am, I am delighted. I am really happy. Yes, to announce. Okay. Then this word, which is task. This one is announce, task. Yeah. This one is requires, requires. Requ this one is definitely, definitely. Definitely. This one is going to be written, written, written. Okay. And we have this one, which is material, material. Now, let me ask you, what product testing strategy is mentioned in the conversation? Which product testing method or test have? Mm -hmm. The monadic test. Yeah. Remember? Mm -hmm. Monadic yes. Test. Yes. Those are methods. Those mm -hmm. are strategies. Those are tests. Right. Okay. Two, talk about product testing. Then, what a specific concern does Mr. Vellis have about the product? A concern is a question. A concern is a doubt. What is the concern? What is the doubt? What is the question? It's about the cost versus the quality. Excellent, okay. Yes, the ghost. Very good, yes. And what is Mr. Avila in charge of? Managing, managing costs. Managing costs, very good. Okay, excellent. Okay, so now guys, you see some phrases right here in bold. Basically, those are um, phrases that we are going to study today. Yes. And these type of phrases actually are related to complex subject agreement. But first, what is subject agreement? What is subject verb agreement in English? What is it? What, what comes to your mind when you hear subject verb agreement? Be an adjective. Okay, can be an adjective. Okay. Okay, so now subject and verb agreement. Tony, help us reading the information. Okay. Many writers struggle with subject verb agreement, especially in longer sentences where it may be difficult to identify the subject. Remember that the subject and the verb must agree in number. Even if, you, if the subject is complex or contains extra information. Very good. So today we are going to study the subject and verb agreement. You know, guys, I mean, we we learn this from basic, but we do not mention this type of topics because those type of topics can make you feel confusing, right? And you can be confused. But the subject and verb agreement is actually whenever we teach the verb to be and we say, you need to use is with she, he, and it. So the subject and verb agreement is that, that he, she, and it, goes with is and in the simple present tense we say 
whenever you have a positive sentence and we have it in the third person, you need to add S, E, S, or I, E, S. That is subject and verb agreement to make sentences in a correct way. Yeah, but those are basic sentences that you can create, right? But today we are going to study with different phrases, which are kind of complex at some point, but those are easy. But you need to maybe be really focused on this class, okay? So let's see. We are going to start by talking about how to achieve verb agreement with complex subjects. Complex, yeah? The ones that I explained before are easy subjects. She is, he is, it is, you are, we are, subject and verb agreement. Yeah? But those, the ones that we are going to cover are complex subjects. And we have simple subject sentence. A restaurant opened yesterday. This one is a simple subject. Yeah? This one. And this sentence is in past. Simple, really simple. You know how to create those type of sentences. Now, what would be a complex, a complex subject? What would be a complex subject? One of the restaurants in San Salvador opened yesterday. In this case, the complex subject would be one of the restaurants because it's a subject which is long. Yeah, that's what we call complex subjects. Yes? Okay, so now let's focus on the information that we have from the book. Yeah? It says that subjects that are preceded by expressions of quantity are called complex subjects. Yeah? They take either a singular or a plural verb, okay, form depending on the number. I mean, those are expressions of quantity. And look at this, the first one of some, a majority, a number, yeah? Those are expressions of quantity. But which is the real um, topic here? Look at this. The first of the decisions. In this case, of the decisions is not the subject. The subject is the first. Yeah. Whenever you have this type of phrase, the first and you have the first of the decisions, we cannot add have. The first of the decisions have been made. No, because the subject is the first, the one that is involved. Yeah, the first. That's why we have has and no have. Yeah. And that's what we call complex subjects because it has this uh, expression of quantity and then it has more information. But the subject is this, the first, yeah? Now, one of the good things, yeah? Look at this one. One of the good things I like about working with you all is, because every time that we use one of, the verb will be singular because we are mentioning one, yeah? Even though you see the good things, which is plural, but this is singular and this is the subject, okay? Then we have some difficult decisions. Whenever we have some and we have difficult decisions to make in relation to fancy, mater to fancy material are, because some is the subject, which is plural. Here, some refers to more than one difficult decision, plural. 
Okay. Uh -huh. Look at this. A majority and a number take a plural verb when they are used with a plural noun. Example given. A majority of product developers prefer to use blind test. I mean, a majority of product developers, right? Even though this is the subject, but it says the rule. They are used with a plural noun, developers. So it should be plural. Okay. But in, in the case of the a majority is not um, one single. One is a, mm -hmm. a or a majority. Mm -hmm. And this confused because you think that you are talking about one of the majority or you are talking about the the um, conjunto. I don't, I don't remember how to yes. say conjunto. But the, con the, the conjunction of the majority. Uh -huh. This is the part confused for me in this, in, in, in this sentence. Yes. So in this case, it says, right? And that's why it says here that a majority and a number those two, specifically those two, take a plural verb when they are used with a plural noun. That means, look at this one, a majority of product developers. So the noun is going to be plural. Even though, as you said, is a group of, of people, right? Mm -hmm, yeah? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it is here the plural noun in this case a majority and a number mm -hmm. is the exception to the rule with correct even plural correct all the time is plural okay yes exactly this is the exception uh -huh. correct this one that is correct okay so now let's see let's take a look at some examples, okay? Look at this one. A restaurant sells lasagna. So this one is a normal sentence. You know that this one is easy. This one is not complex. This one is easy. <laughs> but let's see the second one. One of the restaurants in San Salvador sells lasagna. In this case, which is going to be the subject? One even though we have plural. So we need to add the letter S to the verb. Because we are talking about, about one of the all the restaurants. Correct, the exactly. Uh -huh. Yes, this one is the same. I mean, you need to learn this by heart. That is so easy, guys, okay? One of the things that I like about the restaurant is because we are talking about one of the things, right? Mm -hmm. This one, the first of the restaurant, the first is another expression. The first is always singular, sells. Now with some, we have plural. So the verb should be plural. Look at this one. A majority of restaurants sell because this one takes a plural noun. Yeah. You see? It's just a matter of you identifying this first thing, right? And that's it. I mean, this one is about complex subject and verb agreement. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's see. Now, what we are going to do is the exercises, right? Let's see, number one, we need to choose the verb, yeah? We need to make the verb agrees with the Subject, 
Okay. So in this case, uh, number one. Number one should be some of the participants in the testing group have or has? Have. 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 Not. Has. All right. Yes. Have. have. Okay. Have. Has. No. Because remember, some is plural. So have. Number two. One of the factors to decide on the best type of test is. 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 Is because we have one of one one. Uh -huh. A number of customers is or are is 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 okay. Are you sure? A number. Um, a number is too many. Correct, ah. exactly. It's the exception, right? So it is going to be R. R. Very good. You see? Aha. Aquí es donde tenemos que poner en práctica lo que sabemos. Okay? Three. Number four. The first of the suggestions is very good. Mm -hmm. Yes, because this one is the first. A singular, okay. A majority of testers have have because have. a majority, right? The exception. Um, and number six, a number of comments. Exception. Mm, yes. Exception. Suggest. Suggest that the fragrance. Of the candle is the best characteristic. So you see? Sure. Very easy, right? Roberto? Yes. Eh, eh, ese... Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Este, eh, in some case, for example, for example, it, it depends on the, the context, right? But if, for example, I, I say a majority of the supermarket sell food, I have to say, Sales or, or full or sell full? Um, a majority of the supermarkets sell. Ah, okay. Yeah, because that is the exception. That even though you have a majority, this A, ah, porque eso nos, como que nos confunde, decimos, pero esto es singular. Yes, right? Yes. Pero esta es la excepción que dice que cuando llevemos a majority y lo demás, siempre va a ser plural. Siempre. También a number, mire. Por eso que hemos puesto sin la S, porque es plural, aunque veamos a number y aunque veamos a majority. Ah, okay. Always. The... Always, plural. Okay. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Very good. Any other doubt? No? Okay. So now, then we are going to move to the activity that we have, yeah, which is speaking. Okay, look at this. We are going to work in pairs, right, or in trios. So we are going to talk about strategies to do some things you know. The situation here, okay, as an example, is going to be learn English. The examples, one way to learn another language is to practice with other people. One of the good options to learn English is to get classes online. Look at this. We are using this, this, right? Expressions of quantity, yeah? In this case, that's what you need to do. So one, one difficult thing is to memorize vocabulary. So what I need to do is at least three, three, um, Three sentences using expressions of quantity depending on the situation. For example, learn how to cook. One of the most difficult things to learn is, huh, is to learn the recipes by heart. Yeah, And you use the expression of quantity at the beginning. Yeah, So I want you to use expressions of quantity yeah at least two or three sentences for each situation we have learn how to cook 
resolve a conflict, how to speak in front of a large group of people, and live alone. Yes? This is basically <laughs> like talking about advantages and disadvantages, guys, but with the expressions of quantity. Okay? Like this, like this example. Yes? Do you have questions? No? Okay. No? Okay. So let me let me uh, advance. Okay, you can share the screen. Okay, I'm going to create the breakout rooms, guys. Open the class, please. Okay. Then we are going to come and we are going to take the quiz that we have. Okay. About subject and verb agreement. So, but right now we are going to work with different uh, classmates. Okay. Here we go. Yes. Hello. Yes, I, 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 yes. I mean, I moved you, Carla, and, and you came. Okay, give me one second. I'm going to move you because I saw that you were alone. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Carlos. Emerson, Marius. Okay. We are going. To, we are going to write at least three sentences for each of the situations, right? Yes. Mm. Okay, this, right? Yes, first one. Then hold, hold. Okay. Okay. It can be in singular or, or plural, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Not cool. Let me see. Uh, one of the way to learn. Uh, one of the ways to learn how to cook is in an academy. Okay, I don't know if if is it right. Okay. Let's see. Yes, uh, uh, then let me see. A number of people learn to cook in with videos, for example. Uh, could you repeat it? Okay. A number of people of people learn. Um, number of people learn how to cook in in videos. On videos. On. On videos. Oh, okay. 
videos. <laughs> How many for each t-shirt? Two, two, it's okay. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. The first one, you say. Yes. How? Oh. Hi. <laughs> yes. Creo que ya nos puede explicar un poquito mejor aquí. Yes, of course. Okay, let me let me share my screen. Okay. Um, okay. Where is it here? Okay. Then okay. So remember that we have the topic that we are uh, studying, which is expressions of quantity, right? So basically, the activity is based on this. Yes, on these expressions, mm -hmm. A, B, A, B, yes? So right now, as you can see, uh, this is the example. The situation is learn English. So what I did is that I add some uh, expressions of quantity to start my sentence, yeah? And I follow the structure that we had in the previous slides so one way to learn another language is to practice with other people one of the good options to learn english is to get classes online one difficult thing is to memorize vocabulary then what you need to do is that you need to create two sentences for each situation we have situation one learn how to cook, situation two, resolve a conflict, situation three, how to speak in front of a large group of people, and situation four, live alone. For example, live alone. Okay, live alone. Okay. Um, some difficult aspects, okay, um, of living alone, are you need to pay for the rent you need to buy food you need to um cook by yourself pay the bills you need to pay the bills i mean you can add a lot of things right then you can say um one of the good things of living alone is that you have your uh, privacy. Yes. Yes, you see? But you need to use the expressions of quantity. That's actually the, the, the idea, right? That, that you start like learning those type of expressions. Uh -huh. Yeah. So then you already have those two, right? It's okay. I mean, try to complete a situation, this one, learning how to cook, resolve a conflict, and how to speak in front of a large group of people. Yeah? Two sentences for each. Is it clear now or not yet? Is it better? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Hey, teacher, I can make sentences with uh, routine experience or hobbies. Uh, like for example, um, I can say uh, one of the best uh, place I have visited is the Don Juan waterfall on the Ruta de las Flores. Okay, yes, I think that in this case, Pablo is like having another situation, right? He is talking about places. Uh -huh. It's okay. It's okay, guys. So if you want to talk about routines and hobbies, which is probably easier for you, it's okay. But if you want, you can try to take one of those and try to create some sentences, right? It's your decision. But let's try to practice. Yes, Pablo, but yes, okay. it is okay. okay. Yes. Thanks. Okay. 
Okay. Ah, good. But <laughs> you you pay fast food. <laughs> yes, almost. It's most easy. It's easier. It's easier. Okay. We talk about um leave alone teacher. Really? Okay. Yes, because it's it's exciting. <laughs> okay. All yes, right. I, I I live alone a few years ago. I live alone two years. <gasps> okay. Yes. What can you tell me, George, about that experience? Um well the the first sentences we type is 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 really be, because uh, for example uh, the advantage to to live alone uh, that you have uh, privacy mm -hmm. and you make uh you make uh, whatever things yeah okay. if, when when i come home uh, for example if I want to watch TV. Uh, turn it on, and you turn it on, and yes, and uh, I uh, I don't like cook. I okay. And, uh, yes, and, and if if I uh, if I have I have hungry, I buy. If I, if I was, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. But if if um i don't i don't have um it uh, if i don't want to eat uh -huh. uh, only um i don't know sleep or listen to music oh my god okay yeah <gasps> okay so um in this case cuando quiere decir george eh, si yo no tenía hambre if i was not eh, if hungry i was not Okay. If I was not hungry, huh? De tener. Okay. No es have, right? No que es con el verbo to be. Okay. All right. Mm, simple, right? So you only slept. That's it, right? And nobody yes. said anything. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. If I was boring, I visit my mom because we live um, near. Uh, only on weekends. Uh, I don't stay in in home, okay. and yeah, I go to my friends. Uh, I went to my friends, and I, uh, I don't, I don't return mm -hmm. uh, to my house. Uh, sometimes I. I I went to my the houses of my friend. My friends. My house. friends' houses. Yes, okay. my friends' houses. Okay. All right. So you enjoy it, I can say. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Very good. All right. Okay, guys. Now create two more of probably how do I speak in front of a large group of people? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm, let me check the other room let me see well we have three sentences uh, mm -hmm. simple simple word that the public can understand mm -hmm. okay. okay and what the, one of the good options to speak of the large group of the people may be the good knowledge about your material, mm -hmm. the sports. Yeah. Uh, I think to the one of uh, difficult is a uh, Manage, manage body language. Yes. Language corporal. The body language. Body mm -hmm. language. Yes. One of the difficult things 
to speak in front of a large group of people is to get nervous. Yes. <laughs> so always. Shaking your it's knees. It's happened to me. It, it's happened to me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody, I, I believe. Yes. And you are praying for the the uh, for people don't make questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, leave alone. Yeah, I leave mm -hmm. alone. Okay. And that my my first my first um pensamiento my first my first thought but thought thought how do you how do you um write it write? Uh -huh. yeah. T A O U G H T thought. Ah, uh, my first thought is I need to find my mother. And when I look at this, I only remember the smile in, in, in her face. And in, in this moment, my fears disappears. Um some difficult um experience uh, make more great more greater or, or greater 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 uh -huh. because the first time that I uh, be in the stage uh, is for the dancing the second time is for singing and um, when when I uh, okay Okay. So the part. Okay. Putting. Um, okay, where it says resolve a conflict, guys. Um, it says, a majority of people have it difficult to resolve conflict. Okay, have it difficult. Um, a majority of people encounter or find difficult to resolve conflicts. Uh, fine, uh, remove half. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. The first step to speak in front of a large group is is, uh -huh, is to be sure of yourself. Mm -hmm. Is to be sure. Uh -huh. In the second one, teacher, when mm -hmm. say uh, one of the best methods to resolve a conflict is talking about it, is yeah. uh, to resolve is okay. Yeah. Or with S. No. Oh no, it's okay. Okay. Yes. Um one of the methods to speak in front of a large group of people is is to prepare a good presentation. The first thing you have to do well, the first thing you have to do to live alone is to get a job. is to get a job. Okay. A majority a majority a majority of people. Mm, a majority of people. Let me see. Yes, a majority of people of people a majority of people must have a good must have a good income yes okay guys very good perfect okay so you are done let's go back to the main room okay 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 Tisha. very good okay
Okay, guys. So let's see. Um, Roberto, can you please uh, present your sentences? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Jose will share it. Okay. 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 I'm gonna say. Yes. Okay, uh, the first one, learn how to cook. A number of people learn how to cook on videos. And one way to learn how to cook is studying in academy. Mm -hmm. The second one is resolve a conflict. One of the best methods to resolve a, con a conflict is talking about it. And the second is a majority of people find difficult to resolve it, to resolve conflicts. Uh, next, uh, how to speak in front of a large group of people. The first step to speak in front of a large group of people is to be sure of yourself. Mm -hmm. The next is one of the methods to speak in front of a large group of people is to prepare a good presentation. And the last one is the first thing you have to do to live alone is to get a job and a majority of people won't have a good income perfect yes all of them are very good guys excellent very good okay guys uh, do i have another volunteer to present mm. teacher we we talk about with nelly but we choose uh we choose uh, one. We choose uh, one situation only. Okay. Uh, talk about that situation. Okay. Uh, we talk about that. Live alone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the first one, for example, one difficult thing to live alone is learn to cook. Okay. One advantage to live alone is that you have privacy. Okay, very good. One disadvantage to live alone is that you have pay bills alone. Okay. One difficult thing is that you have to clean the house even you feel tired and you want to rest. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the last one, one, of the good things it that you can go out when you want. Okay, so you can go out when you want. Okay, perfect. The only okay, I have um, let me see, two observations. Okay, so when you say one of the disadvantages, I think that you said yes. of of it's not two, it's okay. of yeah of. O F. Uh -huh. Okay, of and the verb. El verbo que le sigue tiene que ir en ING. Living alone in this case. Correct. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you, Tuch. Okay. Very good. Um, creo que tiene la otra sí también. I, I, I'm not sure. Number one. Or number two. And one advantage? Mm -hmm. Of. Of. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Very good. Okay. Okay, um, all right, guys, I'm going to take the attendance. So here we go. Aleida Esmeralda Amaya. Here, teacher. Thank you. Atilio Ernesto Castillo. Present, teacher. Thank you. Carlos Omar Linares. Present, teacher. Thank you. Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez. Vladimir. Okay. Thank you. Daisy Elizabeth Recinos. Present teacher. Thank you. Yes, yes Vladimir. Yeah, I, I don't know if, if it is my item. Eduardo Franco Núñez. Present teacher. Thank you. Present teacher. Thank you, eh, Vladimir. Okay. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Vladimir present teacher because my internet is bad. Yes, Vladimir. Don't worry. 
Jonathan Jose González. Present. Thank you. Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Bernardo López. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Antonio Elias Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Jose Herrera Alvarenga. Present teacher. Thank you. Carla Sofía Argueta Chévez. Present. Thank you. Kenia Elizabeth Rodríguez. Present teacher. Thank you, Kenia. Luis Miguel Corbera Enríquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Marian Scarlett Rodríguez Luna. Marian. Okay. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Nelly Libes Andrade García. Present. Thank you. Pablo Adalberto Abrego. Present. Thank you. Raúl Antonio Jordán. Present. Thank you. Roberto Esaú Celaya. Present. Thank you. Eh, Sandra Abigail Bonilla. Present. Thank you. Tatiana Ivonne Torres. I am here, teacher. Thank you, Tatiana. Wendy Maricela Ramírez. Wendy. And Wilbur Jonathan Bautista Aguilar. Wilbur? No. Okay, guys. Let's take the first quiz. Okay, so if you are on the spreadsheet, you will see the one that says subject and verb agreement quiz. Okay, I need to please open that one. There you go. I send the link here uh, through the chat. And um, the passcode is going to be grammar. Okay, capital letters, grammar. Okay. Um, Take, uh, actually be careful, all right, on the, on, the, on the answer. This is about subject and verb agreement, okay? La concordancia del sujeto y el verbo, yeah? Okay, once you are done, let's wait for the other ones to finish, okay?
Okay, guys, let me see. Give me one second. It's our building R. The building of home. Okay. All right, guys. So I can see that some of you got a good score. Okay. Some of you probably need to improve. Okay. So do you have any question right now? I have yes. a question. Yes, Roberto. Um, I have a question with a, with a question. Is the number eight? The police are coming right away. I put uh, that is incorrect, but is correct. I think that police is a is a singular, but R is is a plural. I don't know. Yes, Roberto. Uh, well, um, okay. Does somebody know the answer? Me, teacher. I okay. think that. When you are talking about the police or the firefighters, you are talking about the um, the uh, the institution, not are talking about the person. Maybe if you say the policeman is coming right away, you are talking about of one person, no about the the. Um, uh, the, the the conjunction of all the the um, department right? the the identity of, of the of the department exactly exactly okay. Mm -hmm. okay um um in this case Tony instead of saying like I mean to say conjunto let's say group okay oh, okay group okay thanks yes very good. Um, yes, and you are right, okay? So basically, guys, in English, we have one topic, which is collective nouns. That means nombres colectivos. So in this case, the collective nouns are the ones that 
involve a group of people. And uh, police is one of them. Police is always with plural. I mean, uh, if we say police officer or policeman, in this case, it is singular, right? But since we are talking about the group of people, right? The police is plural, always will be plural. Roberto? It's... Yeah, mm -hmm. always, always, always. Thank you. Sure. Police, uh, man, police officer is singular, but if not, plural. Abigail? My, in the case, the family is singular, aunque es un group de people. Correct, those are exceptions. Yes, that is correct. How is the topic teacher collectives? Collective uh, nouns. Collective. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to Thank yeah, you. collective nouns. This is the topic. I'm going to send it. So you can you can study this, guys, because I will be like lying if I say we are going to cover that, right? Because that is a really extensive topic, collective nouns. Yeah. So you may study those uh, by your own, right? So you can go ahead and, and and try to get more information about it. But that topic is very important, okay? Collective okay. nouns, Thank yes. You. Very good. Okay, guys. Sure. Yes. Another example, the family is everyone. Everyone is also actually part of that. It's singular. It's singular. Yes, everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is correct. Mm. You know, um, they have a, a name and the name is indefinite pronouns. You can indefinite pronouns. That is the name for the name for nobody, everyone, somebody, nothing, anything. Indefinite pronouns. That one is a really good topic as well. Yes, very good. Okay, guys. Now let's move to the listenings. Okay, so we have listening quiz number eight and number nine. Let's take number eight right now. So there you go the link for quiz number eight. The passcode is going to be listening as always, okay? Listening. Let's see. Yes. Okay. So let me know once you are ready. Perfect. Okay, guys, I'm going to play this um this audio three times just for you to be sure. Okay. Thank you, Abigail. Okay. So here we go. Let me see. In this video, let's talk about your favorite. Sorry, guys. Okay. Here we go again. In this video, let's talk about your favorite and least favorite classes that you had, whether they were in high school or in college. What were they? Yeah, I think that's an interesting question because I think in college, my favorite and least favorite classes were both English classes. <laughs> so <laughs> I, what was it? So I took several literature classes from this one professor and it was great, fun. And the key point is, he didn't make us write very many papers okay because i hate writing papers and that's why english classes are my least favorite because you have to write papers well, often you do that's correct i hate it i think i have gotten some pretty good grades on papers though because when i really stop caring about the paper and i just sit down and write it i write papers that are different than a lot of people's mm. like i wrote a paper for my philosophy class that had a bunch of jokes in the footnotes and that that was my paper and i got a b on it it was terrible paper but i think it was just entertaining enough that i got a b on it <laughs> and so how were some of those classes your favorites as well 
Yeah. So like in the literature classes, like I took, um, this professor teaches a class on uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, who wrote Lord of the Rings. That's fascinating. So, you know, we would read all of Lord of the Rings, obviously. We would read the Silmarillion. Um, we would write a couple of papers on it, but not very many. And, you know, it's just fun. He taught a class on Stephen King one year. That was great. You know, just some of these, like, fun literature classes versus, like, heavy-duty writing classes, which right. are awful. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing those thoughts on your favorite and least favorite class. Okay. Here we go with the second time. In this video, let's talk about your favorite and least favorite classes that you had, whether they were in high school or in college. What were they? Yeah, I think that's an interesting question because I think in college, my favorite and least favorite classes were both English classes. <laughs> So like, what was it? So I took several literature classes from this one professor and it was great, fun. And the key point is he didn't make us write very many papers Okay. because I hate writing papers. And that's why English classes are my least favorite because you have to write papers. Well, often you do. That's correct. I hate it. I think I have gotten some pretty good grades on papers though, because when I really stop caring about the paper and I just sit down and write it, I write papers that are different than a lot of people's. Mm. Like I wrote a paper for my philosophy class that had a bunch of jokes in the footnotes. And that, that was my paper and I got a B on it. It was terrible paper, but I think it was just entertaining enough that I got a B on it. <laughs> and so how were some of those classes your favorites as well? Yeah. So like in the literature classes, like I took, um, this professor teaches a class on uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, who wrote Lord of the Rings. That's fascinating. So, you know, we would read all of Lord of the Rings, obviously. We mm -hmm. would read the Silmarillion. Uh, we would write a couple of papers on it, but not very many. And, you know, it's just fun. He taught a class on Stephen King one year. That was great. You know, just some of these, like, fun literature classes versus, like, heavy-duty writing classes, which right. are awful. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing those thoughts on your favorite and least favorite class. Okay, you ready? Or do you need me to play it another time? Ready? I have I have problem in the third teacher. Maybe okay. one more time. Please. All right. Yes, here we go. In this video, let's talk about your favorite and least favorite classes that you had, whether they were in high school or in college. What were they? Yeah, I think that's an interesting question because I think in college, my favorite and least favorite classes were both English classes. <laughs> so like, what was it? So I took several literature classes from this one professor and it was great, fun. And the key point is, he didn't make us write very many papers okay because i hate writing papers and that's why english classes are my least favorite because you have to write papers well, often you do that's correct i hate it i think i have gotten some pretty good grades on papers though because when i really stop caring about the paper and i just sit down and write it i write papers that are different than a lot of people's mm. like i wrote a paper for my philosophy class that had a bunch of jokes in the footnotes and that that was my paper and i got a b on it it was terrible paper but i think it was just entertaining enough that i got a b on it <laughs> and so how were some of those classes your favorites as well yeah so like in the literature classes like i took um this professor teaches a class on uh, jrr tolkien who wrote lord of the rings that's fascinating. So, you know, we would read all of Lord of the Rings, obviously. We would read the Silmarillion. Um, we would write a couple of papers on it, but not very many. And, you know, it's just fun. He taught a class on Stephen King one year. That was great. You know, just some of these, like, fun literature classes versus, like, heavy-duty writing classes, which right. are awful. All right. Well, thank you very much for sharing those thoughts on your favorite and least favorite class. Okay. Let me see your scores. Okay. 
Very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. All right, let's take the listening quiz number nine. Yes. There you go. And the passcode is the same. The passcode is listening. Yeah. The same thing. I'm going to play it three times, okay? Yeah. Okay. Let me know once you are ready so I can play the recording. Okay. Here we go, guys. In this video, Emily and I are going to talk about money. And here is the question, Emily. If you want a million dollars, and this is after taxes, how would your life change or not change? Well, the after taxes part is a really big deal because taxes <laughs> takes a lot. Um, first off, I would pay off all of my debt. I okay. have a home loan and I have some student debt. Uh, I would pay all of that off. And I would help out some friends and family okay. and I would possibly invest in real estate. I think that's what I would do with it. Okay. And is there anything I wouldn't do with it? Well, I certainly wouldn't blow it on a lot of useless things. Okay. Um, like buying a whole bunch of fancy cars or a yacht or anything like that. I would want to make sure that that money lasts as long as possible. All right. Well, thank you for sharing those thoughts today. You're welcome. Okay, here we go with the second time. In this video, Emily and I are going to talk about money. And here is the question, Emily. If you want a million dollars, and this is after taxes, how would your life change or not change? Well, the after taxes part is a really big deal because <laughs> taxes takes a lot. Um, first off, I would pay off all of my debt. Okay. I have a home loan and I have some student debt. Uh, I would pay all of that off and I would help out some friends and family okay. and I would possibly invest in real estate. I think that's what I would do with it. Okay, and is there anything I wouldn't do with it? Well, I certainly wouldn't blow it on a lot of useless things. Okay. Um, like buying a whole bunch of fancy cars or a yacht or anything like that. I would want to make sure that that money lasts as long as possible. All right. Well, thank you for sharing those thoughts today. You're welcome. Okay. The last time, just in case you have doubts. Okay. In this video, Emily and I are going to talk about money. And here is the question, Emily. If you want a million dollars and this is after taxes, how would your life change or not change? Well, the after taxes part is a really big deal because taxes <laughs> takes a lot. Um, first off, I would pay off all of my debt. Okay. I have a home loan and I have some student debt. Uh, I would pay all of that off and I would help out some friends and family okay. and I would possibly invest in real estate. I think that's what I would do with it. Okay, and is there anything I wouldn't do with it? Well, I certainly wouldn't blow it on a lot of useless things. Okay. Um, like buying a whole bunch of fancy cars or a yacht or anything like that. I would want to make sure that that money lasts as long as possible. All right, well, thank you for sharing those thoughts today. You're welcome. Okay, ready? Okay, submit your answers, okay? Let me see.
Okay. All right, guys. So was it difficult? Or easy? The first one was difficult. Okay. And the last one a little bit because uh Emily talks very um uh, very fast. Mm -hmm. The the other person is more um in, uh I I think that this um very well to to talk and to pronunciate very well the, the word and it's more easy to understand but I'm only talk faster That's yes nice. I mean they both have a different accent right I mean they they yes exactly Emily is the one that speaks really fast mm -hmm. yes Okay, guys, but don't worry. I mean, that's just for you to also uh, maybe um, improve your listening skills, okay? So right now, let's move and let's continue with uh, the next topic that we are going to cover. So this one is kind of easy, okay, which is the present perfect continuous, yeah? What do you remember about this topic, guys? Or the present perfect progressive, which is the same? Do you remember something? No? no? Okay. Then we have um, some information, right? Some theory for you to have like in mind. So we use the present perfect continuous for actions that begin in the past and continue to progress in the present. Yeah. We can also use the present perfect continuous for actions that had progression but have just finished and they have visible results in the present um in this case i would say that the present perfect continuous help us to describe uh, things that started in the past but they still have relationship with our present right that i would say that the best maybe definition would be number one okay so uh, we also use time expressions when it comes to the present perfect continuous. We have long time, midnight, months, hours, all day long, all night long, all morning, how long, in a long time. Those are some of the time expressions that we have for the present perfect continuous. So um, it is really simple. The present perfect continuous is the one where we use Subject, have or has, plus been, plus verb in ing, and the complement. And look at this. I am tired. I have been helping customers all day long. Visible results, right? I am tired. Why? Well, because I have been helping customers all day long or I have been creating different reports all day long, right? Mm -hmm. So then with the negative, we have subject, have not or has not, plus the verb uh, been, which is auxiliary, then the verb in ing, and then we have the complement. And look at this one. I have not been watering my plants, they are dying. Visible results for something that I have not been doing. Yeah. Then we also have sure. the Excuse yes. Excuse me. The translation of watering. What does it mean watering? Regar. Regar. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in this case, um, we also have questions have or has, depending on your subject, plus been, plus the verb in ing, and then complement, and we also have the question mark. So we have, have you been studying for the test, or how long have you been studying for the test? Yeah? Have you been studying for the test? Yes, I have. No, I have not. How long have you been studying for the test? Oh, for three hours, or for three days. 
right? Or for two months, or I don't know, for a year, could be. Yeah. So in this case, these terms help us to describe situations that started in the past, but they still have progress, right? They still have relation with our present. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have some examples. So help us reading from one to five, Aleita, and from six to 10, can you please help us reading um, that information, Jose, from five to 10? Okay. I have been writing articles on different topics since morning. He has been reading the book for two hours. They have been playing football for an hour. Mm -hmm. I have been watching the concert for an hour. He has been studying in the library for three hours. Very good. We have been shopping at this fair for two hours. We have been watching a movie in this cine cineplex for two hours. Yes. You have been shopping in that market for three hours. I have been singing different kinds of songs, especially modern. I have been listening to melodious songs for an hour. Right. So you see, in this case, basically, um, the present perfect continuous describe actions that um, have uh, started in the past, but they still have progress, right, in the present. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, help us reading this uh, slide, Carla. Uh, all the examples. Yes. I have been working for eight hours. Josh has been playing video games since 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. We have been waiting for a long time. You have been reading since you got up. Since you got up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you please give me some examples, guys, using the present perfect continuous? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have been working as an account receivable clerk for no, sorry, since five years. No, since it, it I have to mention uh at the, the year that I the year started, correct? Right. Yes, yeah, since uh, twenty no two thousand and nineteen. Since two thousand nineteen. Perfect. Since 2018. Very good. Okay. Somebody else? Uh -huh. Another example? Um, I, I have been waiting for the rain for two months. <laughs> I think that we all, right? Yes, Jose. Me too. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Somebody else? I have been waiting my um, air conditioner in my room for 20 years. <laughs> okay, Johnny. Very. Oh my God, okay. Okay, many years. Yes. Okay. Long. Yeah, too long, right? Okay. Somebody else? Mm -hmm. I have been trying to understand English for the last two months. Juan, Jose. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> okay. That oh one is gosh. a real example, okay? That could be a real example. But okay. Um, okay. Very good. Another one? I have be, been... Studying English since okay. okay, let's see. I have been I have been studying. Studying. No? Yes. Studying? No, studying. Studying? No? Mm, like oh. estudiando? 
¿Sí? No. Studying. 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 Okay. Uh -huh. I have been studying English. English. Sin APM. Since 8 p.m. Very good. Uh -huh. Another example. I have been playing soccer for four hours. For four hours, okay. Yes, very good, Morris. Uh -huh. Okay, guys. So now let's see, okay. Number one, my cat, let's um, actually fill out this with the present perfect continuous. My cat has been sleeping all day. Number two. What do you think? Have gym. Have gym, okay. Been Why? doing exercise. Gym. Okay, is it have or is it has? Has. Has. Very good. Okay. Very good. Okay. So, has Jim been doing exercise? Yes, he has. Has. He needs a rest. Okay. Number three. It has been raining for several days. Perfect. Four. I fall the test because mm -hmm. I haven't been studying hard. Okay, I failed. Very good. Okay. Number five. We have been driving for two hours. Perfect. Six. Crazy and Tom have been playing tennis for an hour. Excellent. Number seven. I'm sorry, I'm late. Have you been waiting a long time? Very good. No, I haven't. Haven't. Number eight. Where have oh, you wow. been spending your summer holidays? Very good. Number nine. Who? Who has been eating my cookies? Excellent. Very good. Number 10. You look tired. Have you been working hard? Excellent. Yes, I have. 11. I have been uh, thinking about uh, quitting my job. Quitting my job, okay. And the last one, 12. Why have, have you been getting up so early recently? Recently. Very good. Okay, excellent, guys. You see, it's very uh, easy, right? Okay, now let me ask you something, all right? Uh, Roberto Esaú. Have you been watching videos online? If so, what type of videos? Uh, uh, yes, I have. I, I have been watching, you uh, know, uh, car videos. Sample. Car videos, okay. okay. All right. And Roberto Saú, have you been studying hard? Why and what? Yes, yes. Maybe in this case. Uh, uh, I have been studying hard English okay. and the uh, university. So. 
Okay, perfect. And Roberto, have you been listening to a lot of music lately? Uh, yes, I have. I have been listening uh, pop music. Okay, I've been English. listening to pop music in English. Okay, okay. very good. Excellent. And who is your favorite um singer? Singer. Is she, um, for example? Yeah. Shira, Imagine Dragon, yes. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Yeah. They are cool, right? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. Um, let me see. Carla? I have you, yes. Have you been studying hard? Yes, I have been studying hard. And what and why? Uh, because I want to learn English. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, and the last question, Carla. Have you been listening to a lot of music lately? Yes, I have been listening music. Okay. Tech. tech music? No, um, Korean music okay. or... Japan music. <laughs> Japanese? Really? Yes. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, guys. So just because of the time, we are going to stop right here, but I'll see you back tomorrow. The only person that please stay with me is going to be, let me see, George, are you here? Yes, teacher. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Then the other ones, uh, thank you very much for joining today. Thank you for being responsible, guys. I'll see you back tomorrow. Have a good night. Okay. Good night. Good night. Take care. Good night. 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 Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night. Okay, George. So we are going to have this short feedback, George, and I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Right. The first thing I would like to ask you: How do you feel with this new team what do you, uh, how do you feel with this new group george mm, it's good i know um some partners oh really uh yes Juan jose for example mauricio and uh, we stayed in the other level oh yes right yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And how do you feel? I mean, with our classes, what do you think about this new module? Um, really, is um a little bit difficult this okay. because, well, I think, but when you go the the other level, the learn is is difficult but um i try to understand i try to learn um i uh, that uh, uh many things or or teams or items is a little bit difficult for me okay Okay, George. Yes. Um, well, in this case, as you mentioned before, maybe the topics are kind of complex, right? Are yeah. different than the previous module. Yeah, I remember for, that. Mm -hmm. For example, the listening test, I am, um, well, uh, for me is, 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 is uh, the difficult um, can uh, listening mm -hmm. uh, is most difficult to me. I I think um it's more easy. Uh, it's easier. It's yeah. easier and write and and a little bit talk, but okay. the listening yes uh, is 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 difficult. If you can review my listening test and. It's so hard, but I tried. I I try to to learn. I try to understand the the class or the conversation. But mm -hmm. for me, is 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 a little difficult. A little bit difficult. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, George, you know, um, I think that um, we have uh, good things and, and I would say that um, more advantages than disadvantages, right? Because if you feel that it's kind of difficult, so that means that we need to probably study a little bit more, right? And that you also are learning because uh, sometimes whenever you feel the module kind of easy is because you belong probably to another level, right? Yeah. But right now, if you feel that this module is kind of complex, but uh, speaking and probably the grammar part, right, is kind of easy, but maybe the listening part is the one that you are like having yeah. this hard time with, it's okay. I mean, you know, we all are good at some uh, skills and we need to improve others, right? Maybe in this case, your area of, of improvement is listening. But that doesn't mean that you cannot improve, right? You can improve. You you are going to improve, but we need to keep like taking the exams, right? Like the same thing so your ear can get used to. Yeah. yeah um, I well, I uh, I like I like the class because um I think uh, practice and practice if you um can talk uh um uh, very fast yeah and we we go to the groups and i like because uh, i can talk with my partners and in the grammar in the grammar test for example i try to 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 answer the correct form and mm -hmm. i think this is uh that um, i i think no no make so bad uh, okay. i yeah, I obtained um more or less good grade. Okay. Um yeah, but the uh, listening part is more difficult. I try to for the for example on weekends I try to to listen uh, to music in my in my TV uh -huh. and and listen and put the um, the translate uh -huh. in the yes in the TV. And yes. I try to listen and understand what is the letters for the for the many songs, and I try to practice. Okay, <clears throat> okay, all right. Yes, um, that is going to be a good um, I would say, a strategy. Okay, to learn English, continue doing that. I mean, you will see that. If you continue doing the same thing, you are going to improve, okay? Continue doing that. Try to translate the lyrics, okay? Instead of saying letters, let's say lyrics, okay? Yeah, okay. Um, and yes, I think that that is going to be a good, a good technique that you are using, okay? Try okay. to keep doing that. I can see that um, your ideas are better than the previous knowledge, the previous module, sorry, uh, your ideas are better, um, I would say, are better created, right? You try to create your ideas in a better way right now, and that is something good. So you you are going to improve, George, because I can see that you are, like, doing your best. You try, right, to to speak kind of probably a slow, but you, you try to do it in a good way, and you are doing it, okay? okay. Um, maybe what I need you to, to do I need to participate more, okay? Uh, whenever we ask for volunteers, right? Try to participate. I mean, the only way how you are going to improve, of course, is going to be on the breakout rooms, but also during the class. So I can give you feedback immediately, right? Like correct yourself, right? And all of that. So in this case, George, let me ask you something, okay? Um, How do you feel the dynamic of the class with the speaking part? Do you feel okay? Everything yes, is okay? Yes, I feel so good with this part. Okay, good. Now, uh, do you have any issues with the platform? Something that is not clear? Only Something... only, only one exercise I don't understand because in for me it is a, a difficult topic. And uh, oh. 105. Let me see. 105. Let me, yeah. let me. 105. Let me see. Let me take a look at that, okay? Okay. Let me see. 
Oh, is this the one for reducing the adverb clause? Mm -hmm. Okay. This this topic is is um uh is the more difficult. Yes, difficult for me. Yes, if difficult for me. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay, so what we are going to do, okay, is um, I'm going to try to give a review on this topic. Okay? okay, so yeah, you can have it cleared, right? So let me see. Um, and have you answered that exercise? Did you try to answer it? Really, no, teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what? What we are going to do is that um. Tomorrow, at the very beginning, I'm going to give a review on this topic, right? Okay. So you can um you can be there, and yeah, don't worry. You will see that we are going to have like um some of these examples, right? So you can understand this better. But it is simple. It is simple. It's not difficult. Okay. This this topic is kind of simple. And let me see. Let me get okay. Um, allow me one minute. Okay. Let me try to to get that class. This one is the class that we cover on, on, let me see, on Friday, I think. Okay. Bye. This is the, the, the class, George, this one. This is the class. So we studied adverb clauses, right? And this one is going to be how to reduce them. That means how to make it short, right? How to make it small, yes? And as you can see, we have before, after, since, and while, yes? Um, to reduce an adverb clause to a phrase, we need to do the following, ¿sí? Tenemos que hacer lo siguiente. Primero que nada, para nosotros reducir una cláusula, George, tenemos que identificar que las dos oraciones que van en la oración, a una cláusula le decimos oración, ¿ok? Entonces, por ejemplo, en esta que usted ve aquí, fíjese bien, en esta 2A, dice, before we make a decision, coma, we still need to go over the opportunities and threats that could affect the company. Tenemos una oración bien larga. Tenemos y tenemos dos cláusulas. ¿Por qué? Porque tenemos la primera oración y la segunda oración. ¿Por qué son dos oraciones? Porque ambas tienen un sujeto. Mire, las dos tienen sujeto. Entonces son dos oraciones separadas. Unidas por una eh, un adverbio de tiempo que es before. En este caso, para nosotros reducir esta eh, oración, tenemos que seguir ciertos pasos. Lo primero es que tenemos que ver que los dos, las dos oraciones tengan el mismo sujeto. Veamos si tienen el mismo sujeto. We and we. Yes. Entonces, si nosotros vemos que tiene el mismo sujeto, ahí sí ya podemos reducirla. Si no tiene el mismo sujeto, no se puede reducir. ¿Yes? Entonces, la segunda es que si la oración tiene verbo to be, la oración que va en, después del adverbio, tenemos que eliminar el verbo to be y el sujeto. ¿Sí? ¿Y cuál es lo último? Lo último es que si la cláusula, en este caso, ¿verdad? En este caso la oración, esta oración que va después del adverbio de tiempo, o sea, esta, porque esta es la que se va a reducir, la que va después del adverbio de tiempo, esta. 
Entonces dice que le vamos a quitar el sujeto y le vamos a poner el verbo en gerundio. ¿Y qué es el gerundio? El verbo en ing. Entonces vamos a hacerlo de la siguiente manera. Before making a decision, we still need to go over the opportunities and threats. Fíjese bien, solo le quitamos el sujeto y ponemos el verbo en ing. Pero la que va a modificar es la que va después del adverbio de eh, tiempo. Entonces, en la plataforma, le voy a mostrar, denme un segundo, en la plataforma usted va a ver lo siguiente. Eh, let me see. Entonces, 